Ibiza is a land of bright lights and broken dreams. A place that delights and inspires a hunger for fame. It's also a place that some people find hard to leave, even after death. My name's Gail Porter and I'm a skeptic. My name is Chris Fleming and I am a sensitive. It's my mission to investigate alleged sightings and hauntings of Hollywood ghosts. A sensitive can detect paranormal events beyond the range of the five senses. I wouldn't say I'm a non-believer, but I'm definitely a skeptic. Together, our mission is to investigate the dead famous. Our search for the spirit of Carol Lombard and Clark Gable, Hollywood's dream couple, would take us from the glamour of Malibu, where their relationship blossomed. Did you hear a voice? I heard a girl's voice. Let it out. Get out of her. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Into the heat of the Arizona desert, where they spent their honeymoon. Oh my God. And finally to the remote Pioneer Saloon, where Gable found out that his love had died in a plane crash. Fuck her! Oh. What is it? Oh boy, someone just touched my shoulder. Okay, we got our sign. and Clark Gable were the original Hollywood power couple. Gable is most famous for his role as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind, and Lombard was a highly regarded comedy actress. Together they starred in more than 150 movies, and in the words of actress Esther Williams, they were soulmates who thought life was delicious, and they made everyone's life delicious around them. The American dream ended in 1942 when a plane carrying Carol and her mother crashed at full speed into a mountainside in Arizona, killing them both instantly. So will we trace this infamous couple or will they have found the seclusion that they sought throughout their lives? In 1924, Clark Gable had reached Hollywood and within five years, he was signed to MGM. From his humble roots in Ohio, Gable went on to become one of the world's most famous actors in Hollywood history. Well, Clark Gable will always be the king of Hollywood, the king at the box office, the incredibly handsome man that was uh, loved and desired worldwide by the movie audiences. And of course, Rhett Butler and Gone with the Wind will always be his great legacy. It was just that presence that he projected on the screen, uh, a total authority, a man's man, and also a woman's man. He was called the king, and until he died, he was the king of Hollywood. Although Gable was well known for his liaisons with Hollywood starlets, it was Carol Lombard who stole his heart. One of the biggest female stars of her time, Lombard was known for her wisecracking dialogue and stunning good looks. She can be as tough and as wisecracking as the men. She can hold her own with men in almost any circumstances. At first, she's just a beautiful woman, and so she gets lots of parts just to play that. But once it was discovered that she had this great ability for screwball comedy, then she's cast more and more in those kinds of roles. She wasn't pretentious. She wasn't particularly difficult. This was very appealing, and this might also have been what was appealing to Gable about her. Apart, they were superstars. Together, they became Hollywood's leading couple. They first met on the set of No Man of Our Own, but their romance didn't blossom until 1936. Three years later, they were married, but had only eight years until, tragically, Carol Lombard died on her way home to Gable. And it's in Los Angeles, where their affair started, that I wanted to begin our search. Gable liked nothing better than driving down the coast to a restaurant called Saddle Peak Lodge, where he could show off his hunting skills and romance his love interest under the seclusion of the Santa Monica mountain range. In the 20s, 30s, we started uh, with the movie studio, especially with Gable. There's a lot of stories where he brought out lots and lots of uh, nice ladies to show off his hunting skills, his cooking skills, and uh, probably some other skills as well. Now, the same high-class secluded restaurant is also known for its ghost stories. Staff have been pushed downstairs, customers have witnessed apparitions, 
and there is one table that is said to be haunted above anything else. I'm scared, and I don't know why. You feel like just a presence here. You never feel completely alone, and I don't know if it's the heads on the walls, like you feel the eyes like moving with you, or if it's a spiritual thing. I, I will not be here by myself when it is dark. It's too creepy. Could Gable and Lombard have chosen the privacy of the Saddle Peak Lodge to rekindle their first love? We were about to find out. It's a nice evening. Oh, it's beautiful. It? Look at that view. So this is the place they say there's a lot of ghosts. It's supposed to be really active. I think there's quite a few. Well, let's go see. I had arranged for us to meet Ashley Ertel to find out more. Hi, you must be Ashley. I am. Very nice to I'm meet Gail. you. Hi, Ashley. Chris. Chris, nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. Now, we're very excited. We've heard it's very active in here, so we've been looking forward to this. Can you tell us a little bit about the activity? This is the bar area. It's the oldest area. It used to be the entire restaurant. And the other floors were built later in the 60s and 70s, and even up to the 80s with the third floor. And most of the activity seems to be up there. Now, do you have any paranormal things that ever occur up here? This landing specifically, right here, a lot of people feel a certain, a certain um, pressure or energy right here of someone wanting them to, to move. Other people have seen a man here in a long trench coat and a hat. Um, he's known as the Traveler. And he likes to patrol this area right here and keep it clear. He has been known to push people down the stairs. But it's in the loft that most paranormal activity has been witnessed. Table 41 is said to be haunted by the ghost of a woman dressed in white. Could the apparition be Carol Lombard? Yeah, let me see what I can pick up. So is she seen here a lot? Do you know much about her? Um, people have seen her sitting here watching the people go up and down the stairs. Um, and sometimes staff members who are just cleaning or polishing or setting the tables will say that they feel like they're being watched. So have you, are you picking up anything now? You're picking something up from the table. Well, the table's got like just slight, slight vibrations. Put your hand here. Let me see if you feel this. Do you sense any type of slight vibrations coming from the table? Just very faint. I can feel it. It's, it's like it's kind of vibrating. Yeah. You feel it. Mm -hmm. Can you? Yeah. Okay. Already we had positive signs of paranormal activity at Saddle Peak Lodge. And as night fell, we began our investigation, optimistic that we'd find Lombard and Gable. I want to have you sit at this table, cross from that chair where she normally sits, and call out to her and see if we get anything, OK? What kind of questions should I ask her? Whatever you want. So you're going to leave me up here on my own? Yeah. You don't have a problem with that, do you? I mean, you're a skeptic. You don't believe in anything, so nothing's going to happen, right? Yeah. what I want to do right now is, when we are here earlier, this area right here is very active, and I was feeling gusts of wind and stuff. Now, that fan is off. Okay, the fan is off now. If I'm standing here, I'm going to see if I still pick anything up. Whilst I was upstairs alone, Chris was using dowsing rods to try to pinpoint the spirit who pushes people down the stairs. Okay, show me where the energy is. Show me where you are. crossing right here in this spot. I'm getting um, like a cold wind on my neck and all the fans have been turned off. Oh, I don't like it. Okay. I'm sure I keep seeing shadows. Okay, okay. Sitting at table 41 alone was beginning to make me feel anxious. See, it's crossing again, right in the spot. 
This is the spot right here. Clark Cable? Can you hear me? If anyone's here, could they give me a sign? I keep getting blasts of cold air. I can't figure out where they're coming from. Chris's dowsing rods looked effective, but they didn't get us any closer to Lombard or Gable. I decided we should go outside without the crew to tempt the spirits of the lodge to appear. Did you hear a voice? I heard a girl's voice. It was like singing voice. Kidding me? You no, just you. Chills. Don't, don't, don't. Chills. Oh. Is there somebody else here with us? If so, please speak to us or sing oh to God. us. Oh God! 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 I definitely, definitely heard the girl's voice. I'm sure, sure, sure of it. Though I was convinced that I heard a voice. On reviewing the tapes, the noise of the waterfall drowned out everything, and I had no proof. Did you hear a voice? Events at the lodge were definitely beginning to intensify, and with our night only halfway through, what better way to entice the spirits of Clark Gable and Carol Lombard than a seance around the most haunted table in Saddle Peak Lodge? Let it out. Get out of her. <laughs> Good. Our search for Carol Lombard and Clark Gable, Hollywood's most famous couple, had begun in one of Gable's favourite hangouts. He would come to Saddle Peak Lodge to escape from the Hollywood paparazzi. But was he here now? The loft area is alleged to be haunted by a ghost of a tall woman. Could that be Carol? To take our investigation a step further, I decided to invite the LA ghost trackers to join us in the hope that a seance around the most paranormally active table at the lodge would get us Gable or Lombard. Parapsychologist Shia Fern is here to offer protection and oversee the proceedings of the seance. Clark Gable, Carol Lombard, and the spirits that haunt this place come forward now one at a time. Ooh, just got cold. Do you feel that? In between us, our arms? Yeah. We've got activity right here. Who is that that's standing between us? Who are you? did not want to die this way. Are you the one that is on the stairs that pushes people? Are you the one that... Yes, yes, yes. Is that how you die? Ooh, ooh, yes, okay, very strong. Chris? Yeah. Shyla's worried that um, this is not a nice man and she's worried about you and do you... No, want... I'm okay, I can handle this because I'm having him back off. I mean, it's kind of like a crow magnon man. Hawkworks. And I looked at him, and he went up to the hostess desk, and he said, oh, I bet you it would be great to push people down the stairs. That would be a lot of fun. And he looked at me, and he winked. And he was gone. He wasn't, we had two parties going on, private parties upstairs that night, and he didn't belong to any of them. Clark or Carol, can either one of you spirits, you souls, come through and speak to us? really strange thing going on here. What's going on? I don't know. What's wrong? I don't know. What are you feeling? It's not good energy. Someone's pissed off. Someone's really pissed off. I can't come over me. I don't know why. Don't let it enter into you. Gloria, don't. Gloria, control it. Control it. 
spirit guys come through, let it out, get out of her. <laughs> Do you want to move on to the other side? Answer me. I can't. Yes, you can. I can't. Yes, you can. Don't be afraid. Open your doorway now of light. Present the light to her so she can see. Let her cross over. Come now before her vibration changes. Gloria. I think it's that man. Over there. What was Gloria seeing? Was it the traveler we had heard about, or could it be Clark Gable? It's gone. <laughs> That's it. How the hell scary is that? But whatever spirit or presence that remains at Saddle Peak Lodge, I was sure we hadn't come in contact with Gable or Lombard. As we drove in the early morning traffic of the Hollywood streets, the events of last night continued to play on my mind. Chris and I headed to a local diner to discuss what had happened. Do you know what? I think that last night, as a skeptic, I find it quite exciting. We had so much stuff happen. It, it seemed to be jam-packed full of things. I mean, there's a lot of things I still think can be dismissed. Like what? Uh, I'm not completely, um, you know, 100% sure about the dowsing rods. You don't like the dowsing rods? No. So you feel uncomfortable using that device? I don't, I don't trust okay. it at all. But then you've got Gloria at the seance. I went up and was filming her really close. And her eyes just, when she turned around and looked at me, and I was saying to her, Gloria, are you OK? Nothing. I thought she was going to lunge at me. Yeah, I thought she was going to go for me. It was like she didn't know who I was. Well, what about maybe I can get closer to it and find something else out? Clark Gable and Carol Lombard were epitomised by their romance. Their affair started in 1936 at the Beverly and Wiltshire during a glamorous Hollywood party, the Mayfair Ball. Carol was in charge of the arrangements for the 1936 Mayfair. He saw Carol and, you know, asked her to dance. And so they, they go dancing past Clark's actual wife, who was there with some other friends. And she says, well, doesn't that old bag belong to you? And he kind of went, oh, my God. He suggested, well, why don't, we, why don't we get out of here for a little bit? And she notices that he keeps driving around the hotel he was living in. And uh, he says, well, what do you want, you want to come up for a, for a drink? You want to come up for a bit? And she says, well, who do you think you are, Clark Gable? But the romance blossomed, and Lombard sent Gable a flock of white doves with the message, how about it? With this in mind, I felt our search needed to focus to where the couple were happiest. This meant swapping the hustle and bustle of the Hollywood streets in exchange for the bleak terrain of the Arizona desert. Situated 127 miles south of Vegas in the Mojave Valley is the historic town of Oatman. In 1939, Lombard and Gable escaped the trappings of celebrity life and traveled through the spectacular scenery to get married. They spent their honeymoon in what is now more famous as a ghost town. I thought we should come here because this is the place where Carol Lombard and Clark Gable came for their honeymoon. Really? And they loved it so much they kept coming back again and again and again. They liked to gamble with the miners. But I thought it would be better to find their spirit somewhere where they were happiest. What do you think? Well, definitely. We have to go to the places that Clark and Carol were the most happiest. Places that they frequented because you never know, they might come back. You know, otherwise, I mean, look at this town. It's one heck of a ghost town. There might be something else here, too. Hope so. Yeah. To find out more about the Oatman Hotel, we met up with its owner, Susie Clark. Susie, do you have any ghosts or stories about in this hotel? Yes, we do. We have what we call Odie the Ghost. It was a man named William Flower, a miner, an Irish miner who... Uh, died here behind the hotel out of grief when his family died on their way to join him. Is he here often? And he's here all the time. We hear all 
stories of him uh, goosing bartenders and causing havoc up here. And he's a very active ghost. Oh, so this is the room. This is the honeymoon suite. Is it pretty much the same as it was? Yes, my understanding is that it is pretty much. Is that her wedding gown? Yes, yes, uh huh, Carol Lombard's. And they stayed here. This is the bed that they slept in. Are you feeling anything yet, Chris? No, not yet, but this is interesting. You're saying these original artifacts, when they were here, you know, maybe I'll pick up some place memory on some of the stuff. That'd be great. Well, if you don't mind, we're going to come back when it's nightfall and do our investigation. Absolutely. Properly. We'll be happy to have you. Chris, what have you got with us today to help with our investigation? What I've got here and what I do want to use tonight is thermal scanner. Now, you're familiar with this. Different situations may occur where there's cold spots, okay? People, people believe that these cold spots are caused by spirit activity, you know, entities coming in and out of our atmosphere, you know, creating some type of disturbance in our temperature. What this does, and what it's always been used for, is to gauge those temperatures. The other thing that I'm going to use, which you're very familiar with, I always use this everywhere we go, of course, is a recorder. To record your EVPs. That is correct. Electronic voice phenomena, you see? And I also use my senses to see if I pick up any place memory, because Clark Gable and Carol Lombard were here before. What I'll do first, Gail, is I'm going to go to each individual room and walk down these corridors. You know, just follow with me, and I'm going to call out, see if there's anything here we might get something on EVPs. You know, a first introduction to let them know that we are here. Let's go into, obviously, room 15, Clark Gable's room. And I'm going to start recording now. We're now in the Oatman Hotel, and I'm entering into room 15 for Clark Gable and Carol Lombard. I'm going to call out to any spirits and see if any are here. If there are any spirits present in this building, can you please come forward and speak to us? We would like to talk to you. Let's go over to the Oatman room. Now, this also is supposed to be very active. I guess some of the people that have come in here have been cleaning, cleaning up, as well as people that have stayed here have felt some type of presence. The bed sheets have been moved, as well as have been indentations, and some of the drawers have been opened. We got a window open. So, if I take any readings, 95. Do you feel anything? Feeling something now. Feel it's it? coming from down there. We gotta go over here because I felt something over here. I don't know if it's on the other side of this wall or if it's here, but I want to check it here first. I felt a male spirit. A lot of anxiety involved in this male spirit. Are you in this room? Are there any spirits in this room that communica can communicate with me or Gail? Do you feel anything in this room? I felt something a little bit behind me. Like what would you feel? I felt as if someone... I'll show you. I'll show you. Stand where you are. This is exactly what I felt, okay? As if someone came up right behind me, as I actually slightly leaned on me. That's what I felt. Not enough to where it would freak me out, but I felt their energy. Not a physical against physical. I felt the energy, where all the energy changed from behind me. Just move that way a wee bit. Why? What's wrong? I thought I saw a shadow in there. The mirror? mirror? Is that mine right there? No, no, it's, that's yours, but... Okay, let me keep moving, see if you keep seeing it. No? Looking back on the tape, we found a shadow on the mirror. The crew and myself were well behind the lights. But as Chris moves back, it's gone. Who or what was this shadow? Could it have been Clark Gable or Carol Lombard's ghost? 
Deep in the Nevada desert, our search for the spirits of Gable and Lombard was starting to heat up. Oh, my God. But nothing would prepare us for what lay ahead. Somebody just touched my arm. Events. Do you hear a voice? Did I hear the girl's voice? We had now moved deep into the Arizona desert, where we were investigating the place that this dream couple spent their honeymoon. Lombard and Gable tried to avoid the glare of the paparazzi in life, and I was getting concerned that they were doing the same in death. I thought I saw a shadow in the mirror. With no concrete evidence so far, Chris decided we may be more successful if we separated and continued the search alone. Um, I'm sitting in Oti's room, which is, um, it's okay actually, because the window's open, so I'm getting a bit of a breeze, because it's really hot. Um, Chris has gone to Clark Gable's room to see if he can pick anything up. And I guess I'm just gonna sit here and see if I hear anything, or I see anything, or if anything freaks me out. But it's quite peaceful just now. If Oti's in this room, could you give me a sign, please? Oh, my God. There's freaking energy in this thing. When I was touching it, it reminded me when I touched a wire at a farm where they kept cattle in, and I got this charge, electric charge. That's ex exactly what it felt like, but it was a little bit number. It wasn't as sharp. I don't feel anything strange. Did Clark Gable and Carol Lombard sleep on this bed frame with a different mattress? I believe it was a different mattress. This is not the same mattress, but this is, is this the same bed frame? Okay, this may very well be the same bed frame. Even at night, the temperature in the desert was just under 100 degrees, and I felt that this was interfering with Chris's sensitivity. The Oatman Hotel just wasn't delivering any of its spirits, and so I decided it was best to end our investigation here. Lombard and Gable had the ideal relationship. They were both very successful actors and were living the American dream. But their perfect life ended abruptly in 1942 when Carol died dramatically in a plane crash on Mount Potosi in the Nevada desert. Carol had been scheduled to take the train, Carol and her party, uh, and she was very concerned about Clark dallying with a certain blonde actress that he was working with at the time, whose initials are Lana Turner. And so she was in a big hurry to get home. She didn't want to take the train. It would have taken several days. She said, look, let's take a plane. It took off about 7.03 in the evening of the 16th from Las Vegas. The plane just, it hit a, it hit a vertical cliff. It hit a sheer cliff. One wing clipped off the top of a tree and everybody on board was killed instantly. Not knowing if his wife was dead or alive, Gable rushed to the crash site, vainly hoping to see her again. You could still see the fire up on the mountain by the time he did get there. Uh, none of the search parties had, had come back at that point. They were still trying to, to reach the, the accident site. There was a, there's a little bar called the Pioneer Saloon. It was a bar where the, the miners would hang out. And he was pacing, he was smoking, he was worried he wouldn't eat, he, he, he wouldn't really talk to anybody. And so he waited and waited. This traumatic end to the relationship led Chris and I to the Pioneer Saloon to see if Gable's spirit was still there, tied down by grief over his wife's death. Carol Lombard's plane crashed not far from here and Clark Gable waited in this saloon that we're going to. This place up here. Yeah, to find out whether or not she was alive or dead. 
So could you imagine that way? That must have been horrific. Oh, I can't even imagine. How dreadful. To find out more information about the bar and its connection to Lombard and Gable, I had arranged for us to meet with the barmaid, Karen Cobb. Karen, hi. I am. I'm Gail. Hi, Gail. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And you've been here for quite a long time. Oh, about 11 years here at the bar. So you know a lot about the history? Uh, quite a bit. Can you tell us a bit? The building was built in 1913. It's made of tin. It's the oldest tin building inside and out left in continuous operation in the United States. Do you get any paranormal experiences Ooh, here? Yes. Ghosts? Yes. There's a little miner. He helps me. Uh, I fell and he caught me and laid me down very softly. No. So, I mean, it's like he, he's there. Now, what does he look like? You said you've seen him a couple times. And he's like a little short, minor, uh, crunchy old hat on. Now, do you think he's still here? Oh, I, yeah, I know really? he is. Yeah, he's always with me. Did you feel anything when you walked in? Well, yeah, when I walked in, I felt energy. I don't feel really anything negative, but it's like I've been doing this because my hands are like tingling, mm -hmm. you know? And I have to ask you because I'm getting like an image of uh, two guys, uh, one shooting the other. Was there like a gunfight here or something like that? Stranger to say that, yes. Really? Yes. This wall here is a tribute to Carol Lombard and Clark Gable. Oh, you've got great pictures. Oh, they are. They're just absolutely wonderful. Do you have any idea that when he came here, if he knew whether or not Carol was alive or dead? I think he knew but didn't want to know. So that's a hard one to answer. It really is. This was our last chance to find the spirits of Lombard and Gable. And so as night fell in the desert, we headed back into the saloon. It's like dead in here. All you hear is the crickets. We started our investigation in the back room where we had heard that the spirit of a man had been felt by various members of the staff. It is such a different feeling in this room. It has nothing to do with temperature. I think that that spirit tends to hang out here because what I'm feeling is, is spiritual energy. Spiritual energy, meaning that he probably resides here a lot and he that energy gets dispersed, and this is probably his hangout, I think. Are you here with us now? If so, can you come towards my meter? Make it spike again. Ooh, just jumped again. How can you tell just because... In a room full of fridges, I was finding it hard to believe that Chris was picking up paranormal activity. So I decided that we should continue our investigation back in the main bar. As soon as we entered the room, Chris felt a change in the atmosphere. I can sense somebody here right now. Can you manifest in front of my camera so I can get a picture of you? I would love to have a picture of you. Chris had photographed what many people regard to be an orb or the image of a spirit reflected in the flash of a camera. This was the largest and most clearly defined anomaly that he'd ever captured. Could it have been Clark Gable making his presence known? I swear I just heard, like, shuffling. Feet. What happened, Chris? Yeah, I was just feeling that there was something over here, and I got this smile, like, energy. It felt like there was someone that was standing right here, and I'm just taking pictures, and even a, a cameraman felt it, too. Probably just touched my arm. <laughs> Maybe it was a bug. Maybe, Maybe it was a bug. bug. Okay, because remember I told you, there's bugs flying around. Okay. Did it feel like a hand or a bug? Well, it felt a little bit like, I don't know, it was like this. I'll show you. Okay. It's a bit like... Just like that. Put yeah. your arm up. Put your left arm out oh, behind you. Go. Put your left arm out behind you. Just go ahead and do it. Trust me, I'm right here. I'm standing right next to you. Put your arm out. Please, Gail, all the way. Extend it out. Okay? Ghost that is here, the miner, if that was you, will you please touch Gail's arm again? Please touch her arm again, if that was you. Just relax. Make contact with Gail again, please. Touch her arm. He's kind of excited right now and he's taking humor in this, okay? He's wondering what we're doing and why we're here. 
So I really think and I believe we can make contact with them. This could be a really cool night. All right, this is going to be a night where you finally realize that ghosts do exist. So Chris was starting to get excited by the saloon, but neither of us was prepared for what the night was going to hold. Fuck her! Oh. What is it? Oh, boy, someone just touched my shoulder. OK, we got our sign. In our search for Carol Lombard and Clark Gable, we had been experiencing some interesting phenomena. I thought I saw a shadow in there. Mirror? Mirror. We had now moved the search to the Pioneer Saloon, where Gable had waited to hear that Lombard had died in a plane crash. Chris had already captured an orb on camera, and the investigation had only just begun. Somebody just touched my arm. <laughs> Maybe it was a bug. Maybe, Maybe it was a bug. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go turn on the TV, okay? And I'm gonna use the noise on the TV, white noise, I'm gonna put it on a channel where there's no signal. And what's gonna happen is that no signal creates distortion. It's like shh. That creates a type of channel for them to give us their message, to speak on. So what we've done is we've set up at this table where the, the, the dispute happened, and the gunfight was right here. So there's energy, energy already here. So let me go over here and turn the TV on and we'll get started. OK. Do you need me to do anything? No, just sit and be patient and be skeptical. Should be good enough. All right, Gil. I love this part. What do we do now, then? OK, well, what we're going to do, we're just going to be patient. Let's spend about 10 minutes, OK? until whatever spirits are here, we want to communicate with you. Use the noise from the TV to send your message to us, to speak to us. Whatever you want to say, please speak to us. Why do you stay here at the Pioneer Saloon? Clark Gable, Carol Lombard, you died not too far from here. Are you here now and can you speak to us? Fuck her! What is it? Oh boy, someone just touched my shoulder. I didn't mean to jump like that, but. I did not expect that because I was actually thinking something was going to happen over here. <laughs> something touched my shoulder. Was that you? Miner that occupies this place that was once a miner. I don't know your name and I'm sorry. Was that you? The TV just went really bright. Can you speak to us or can you put your image through that TV so we can see you? I feel him, Gail, but he's not doing anything. I really feel him. Why are you covering your face? Are you nervous? You do that when you're nervous. You cover your face. <laughs> Get your hand away from your face. Spirit, if you can, like, knock over this tape player, if you can shut off the TV, if you can turn a light on, or make contact physically with someone else in this crew, a couple of them don't believe you exist. Please do so now. Give us a sign that you are here. Give us a concrete sign you are here. Constant. I have no explanation for it turning off. Could this be Clark Gable or Carol Lombard coming through to contact us? Thank you very much for doing that. Is there anything else you want to do? Because that's fun. Do something else. You've got us going now. We're having as much fun as you. I'm having no fun. <laughs> Zilch. Zero. You saw what happened. I know, but I need the toilet really badly now. <laughs> this is awesome. 
Thank you. Um, I've been touched on my shoulder. We had the TV go off. Okay. Maybe it's just the beginning. Maybe something else. The night was proving more active than I could have imagined, but I felt there was more that we could find out. I had organized for a local tarot reader to join us to help unravel the mystery of the Pioneer Saloon. We'd like to ask about the spirit that, that's here, the miner they talk about, as well as if he's the one that turned the TV off. Um, actually, there's a woman spirit here. She's, um, she's the one that's having the most fun. You were mentioning earlier that someone touched you. It was this woman. Could Carol Lombard be trying to contact us? Is she here with Gable at the site of her crash? She was a very playful spirit in life. She was one of those rare souls that could actually pull somebody out of a dark mood. There's a, um, a secret about Carol Lombard that nobody has yet to find because she buried it so deep. Really? The Carol Lombard we knew on the screen was nothing like the Carol Lombard privately. Did she like being someone else? She was best when she was someone else. And can we ask questions to Clark Gable? Actually, he still visits here. If this, if this card represents him like it did in the first spread, his spirit is still here. After she passed away, after she was gone, he did not want to be on this earth plane anymore. Okay. He chose his time when he left, and that he was very happy when he left, because she was waiting for him. But she was happy when she died because she was on her way to see her love. So for her, she did, there was no, um, even though the timing was, oh darn, she was still happy because she was going after what she wanted and that was the love of her life, so. The following morning, Chris and I met up to discuss what we had discovered on our entire journey. This has been an interesting trip, don't you think? This has been one of my favorites, I think. There was so much happened, so many coincidences that you can't really explain. Saddle Peak Lodge, mm. the sands. Gloria crying, mm -hmm. everyone getting involved. What do you think about the open hotel? I didn't think that was very scary at all. I didn't no. think I picked up anything in there. But my favorite was the Pioneer Saloon. Oh, that was fantastic. I so <laughs> many times jumped out of my skin. And the TV went off and it was a bit, Whoa! And then I got that orb, that really bright oh orb, God. when I said manifest, and then it appeared right on that picture. And someone touched you, and the tarot reader came in, and she thought there was something there. There was so much that happened there that it's difficult to just ignore it. I think for me, this investigation probably gave me the most confirmation that maybe something is out there. So yeah. maybe I'm turning into more of a believer. Really? It's maybe. about time. Maybe.